here's an easier way to draw Lewis dot structures in chemistry. Quick warning, while these tricks will work most of the time, chemistry kind of sucks because there are always some exceptions to the rules. But anyways, when you're given a chemical formula, the first step is to identify what the individual elements are and then add up the total number of valence electrons. You can figure out how many valence electrons are in each element by looking at the periodic table and seeing which column it's in. In this case, carbon has four valence electrons and chlorine has seven. Since there are four chlorines, this gives us 28, which we add to the four from the single carbon to get a total of 32 valence electrons. Now we're gonna take this total and divide it by two to give us 16 bars that we can use to draw our Lewis diagram. The first step is to draw your central atom, which will usually be the first element in your chemical formula. In this case, it's carbon. The next step is to connect the other elements around it with single bars, which in this case are the chlorines. Doing so, we can see that we've used four bars, which means we have 12 left to work with. In general, every atom wants to have four bars touching it. So while the carbon already has four, we're going to have to place the remaining bars around the chlorines so that they each also have four. Now we've used up all the bars, so we're done. The last step is to replace the bars that don't connect elements together with two dots. These are what we call unpaired electrons. Now let's try something harder. Here we have N2H4, which we're going to do the same thing in adding up the total number of valence electrons, dividing by two, and getting seven bars to work with. Starting our drawing off, the nitrogens will be in the center, and we'll need to connect them together with a bar. Now drawing the hydrogens, we're going to connect two to each nitrogen. Nature usually wants things to be symmetric. Now we see that we have used a total of five bars, which means we have two bars left. Remember how I said chemistry has exceptions? Well, hydrogen is one of them, where it only wants to have one bar touching it. So the hydrogens in this diagram are happy. However, nitrogen is normal and still wants four. So we're going to have to place one bar on each of the nitrogens. Now we've used up all seven of our bars and every element is happy. Last step is to again replace the non-connecting bars with two dots and you're done. Sometimes you'll need to use multiple bars to connect elements together. These are called double bonds and triple bonds. In this example, we have NO2 minus, which has 17 valence electrons from the nitrogen and the oxygens. But the minus on the whole formula means that there's an extra electron hanging around, which is what gives it a minus one charge and 18 total valence electrons. Dividing by two, this gives us nine bars to work with, which we're going to start to connect the central nitrogen to the outer two oxygens. Our next step is to try and use up all the remaining bars by first placing them on the outside oxygens and then on the central nitrogen. While now we've placed enough bars on the oxygens for each of them to have four, the problem is that we have run out of bars to make the nitrogen happy, and it only has three. The trick here is that whenever you run out of bars, try borrowing one of the non-connecting bars from an outside element and use it to create a double or triple bond to the central element. In this case, we're going to borrow a bar from one of the oxygens, it doesn't matter which one, and create a double bond to the nitrogen. Now the nitrogen has four bars, the oxygens both have four bars, and everyone is happy. Perfect. Last step is to draw the dots, and you're done. And there you have it. That's how to draw Lewis dot structures in chemistry. Nice!